All right, welcome to the second video on a meta theory preliminaries for propositional logic. Today we're going to be looking at uh, some concepts of soundness before proving it in the next video. And I'm going to tell you what soundness is. So soundness says that for any set gamma of sentences, so a collection of sentences gamma, and any sentence alpha, if we have a proof of alpha from gamma, then gamma is going to entail alpha. So what this really means is that um, the proofs, also known as the syntax, imply the truth tables, or what we'd also know as the semantics. So soundness is taking syntax and going to semantics. So we're going to introduce a couple things in this video uh, just because they're sort of necessary notation and uh, I, I think fitting anything more than just the proof of soundness in one video would be insane because the proof is huge. There's a huge daunting proof and it's the first proof a lot of intro logic students do, which is scary. So uh, one thing we're going to talk about is a superset. A superset S is a set of sentences that contains every sentence in some other set P. And this might be confusing. So we write this as S, and then we have a superset here for P. Sometimes there's a line under it, uh, sometimes there's not. I'm not going to write it. But what this says in the Venn diagram, if you have, if all these sentences in this circle are P, then all the sentences will also be in some other set S. They're just going to be contained within. And there are some cases where S could possibly be the same size as P. Uh, technically a superset? Yeah, it is, it is a superset. It's not a proper superset, but it's a superset. So using this, we are going to prove the following. If gamma entails alpha, then for every superset gamma prime of gamma, gamma prime is also going to entail alpha. So this might seem a little daunting because this is the first time I'm really introducing a ton of Greek letters, but basically what this says is that if we have a bunch of sentences, uh, P, Q, R, blah, 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 and we can get a proof by truth table of say some sentence S, then if we have another set that also contains p, q, r, blah, 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 plus say we have some other things in here, alpha, beta, gamma, and some other things, and we can also get a proof of s from it. That's what we're saying. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, we have our supposition that gamma proves alpha. So we say gamma prime is a superset of gamma. Therefore, every sentence in gamma, which this just means in. So every sentence in gamma is in gamma prime. Therefore, gamma prime will also entail alpha. Because there is a proof, um, because there is a proof of alpha in gamma. So because gamma prime contains gamma and alpha is proved in gamma, the bigger set also proves alpha. So entails is really the word I should be saying, but I think it's fairly intuitive, so if we have this, this circle here, we'll call this uh, gamma, and through this we get this lovely result of alpha, which please stop doing this. Um, if we take a bigger subset of it, gamma prime, well, this area here is the one that proves alpha, so, well, it's inside of gamma prime, therefore it also proves alpha. And I think pictorially is a great way to picture this. Uh, obviously in a proof you wouldn't write that, you'd write down these lovely words. 
but hopefully as a first year logic student, especially if you're just from philosophy and not doing math, it's not going to be as daunting to see a picture proof like this. And you need, you need, 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 need to get used to using these Greek letters and these sort of definitions. It's scary, but when you have the pictures and you know the notation, it's very easy to just put things together. So there is one proof. And on this page, uh, there's another one we're going to prove, and that we have a new operator here. This is called the union operator, so this just kind of means like um, gamma and q, not in the sense of and as in truth tables, but it contains both gamma and q. So this is what this means. So if gamma and this new atom q is inconsistent, which means it's a contradiction, then gamma is going to entail the negation of that consistency. So here's what we'll do. We'll start this proof off nicely. Okay, so we're going to assume that gamma is consistent meaning that there are no contradictions. And then we'll assume that gamma union Q, so when we take Q into it, it's going to be inconsistent. So therefore, we have that gamma union Q is going to prove some false theorem, which we write like this. I'm actually going to leave this line out because that's something a little bit... Actually, I'll just leave it here. This is, um, this is the symbol for a contradiction. This is called the falsum, and it just means there's a contradiction. So what this should be is a entailment sign here. So gamma union Q is going to entail the falsum. Therefore, Q creates a contradiction. So Q creates a contradiction. And we know that any contradiction can never be true. Therefore, gamma is going to entail the negation of it. And the reason I say this is because, okay, if we have gamma union Q, let's just write this as gamma comma Q and it proves some sort of inconsistency, then that means that inside gamma is a proof of not Q. And because there's a proof of not Q inside Q, or a proof of not Q inside gamma, when we add Q to our system, it is going to create a contradiction. Therefore, we cannot add Q. So that means that if we have gamma, we should be able just to prove not Q on its own. Because adding Q makes a contradiction, therefore not Q must be inherently part of the system we already have, which is gamma. And I think that's probably one of the easiest ways to explain it. Uh, there's much more technical words in textbooks, but I'm trying to distill it down to the most important fundamental ideas of these proofs and, you know, give enough information that it's all there. So here's the steps. One, we assumed that, hey, this set of sentences we have, it's consistent. And two, when we add this one mysterious atom, Q, it suddenly becomes inconsistent. And by inconsistency, we know that, oh, Q and its negation must be in the set. But we don't see a not Q Therefore, not Q must be in our set of sentences already. And if not Q is in those set of sentences, we know either by reiteration or by a bunch of rules that we can get a proof of it out of entailment from gamma. And those are some soundness preliminaries. So when we come back next time, we're going to do the big, long proof of soundness. And it is going to be so much fun. Really, it's actually going to be kind of fun. I, I like doing these proofs. Uh, they seem a lot harder than they are, and hopefully uh, 
you'll enjoy this. So I'll see you in that video.